Do you want a trick to filling up your pantry very quickly without all the prep work for dehydrating? Let me show you how I do it next with dehydrated frozen vegetables. And here's the fun thing we do with them for spices. Hi folks, it's Darcy from The Purposeful Pantry. And today we're gonna to be doing something quick and easy with doing peppers and onions that come prepackaged in uh, frozen bags that you can get from the grocery store for pretty cheap, especially when they're on sale, and frozen onions that are already done. And the cool thing about it is that they work really well without all the smell. It does not smell anywhere near as much as if you're doing them from fresh. And then we're also gonna be doing this Kasori uh, coffee grinder review for doing dehydrated powders, just to see how I like it. Something new on the market that I wanted to give a try. Okay, so today what we're gonna be doing is dehydrating a pepper and onion blend that you can use for any, uh, I wouldn't use this as a stir fry. Uh, as much as I would maybe putting it into other things, but you can use this in any number of dishes that you want. You can chop this up a little bit more if you don't like it this big, but it's a great way to have this available to you whenever you want it if you can't get to it yourself. So using frozen foods that are already pre-prepped, they are cut, they are blanched if they need to be blanched, they're ready to go. You can just throw them onto your dehydrator trays, you can let them go. Um, and don't even have to defrost them, you just put them on your trays, then this is a great way to stock up on some basics that you wanna put in your pantry. So what we're doing right now is we're gonna do these peppers. You can use this, use these for a Cajun Trinity kind of thing that if you'd like, you can always pick out the red pepper and do those for something else down the road. Just keep your green and, uh, and onion together to do a Trinity and then you can add garlic to it as you need to also. Um, you can do whatever you'd like with this, but this is a really great convenience food to go ahead and stock up on and get dehydrated and have stored in your pantry. I'm also going to be doing these chopped onions um, that um, something to be said about doing chopped onions that have been frozen already, but it won't smell your house up anywhere near as much as if you did them fresh. I'm going to get the rest of these trays going. We're going to set it at one. Normally what I would say is you would set it at 145 to 150 for the first hour or two just to help defrost everything quickly. Then you drop it and then you just let it dry like it's supposed to. Okay, when I'm placing these on my trays, I do want to make sure that I have them spread out a little bit, that I don't have them all overlapping like you might do with some things that you know are going to shrink up a lot. And while I know onions will shrink, um, I'm just going to make sure that I've got some room here that they're not just completely overlapped and so much of the produce at a point where it can't dry well. Okay, now I'm going to do the onions. I thought I could get them all in the Sahara by the time I was done, but I cannot. So here we go. We're going to make a bit of a mess. I will clean it up in just a minute. I'll pour them out on our trays. I have lined my trays with mesh because these will fall through the cracks and through the, through the, uh, these will fall through the tray. And in fact, go ahead and do that now. So these are all pre-ready, these are ready to go just like they are. There's nothing that you have to do with this. It will make doing onions so much easier for those of you who are not a big fan of having to prepare onions. This is the easiest, fastest way to do it, just buy them frozen. These have, right now, if I was doing this with raw onions, uh, it would be a pretty, pretty big smell. I'm smelling no onion whatsoever. All I'm smelling in the house right now are the peppers from the tri-blend. <clears throat> so this is definitely a way to handle doing onions for those of you who just don't like the thought of doing onions. Yet you still want to make your own mirepoix, your own onion powder, your own trinity blend, uh, your own caramelized onions, however you want to do it. Frozen is a great way to get started. Okay, so we have the Sahara loaded with one, two, wait, one, two, one, two, three, four trays full of the pepper blend, and then one tray of about a cup of it, so I can show you what the, the conversion looks like. And then we have one, two, three, four, five trays of onions in the kasori. We're gonna do a quick start it up. And I'm not gonna bother running these up to 150. Now we're doing temperature, Darcy. These are thawing out so fast because of our house. We're just gonna go ahead and let these go at, nope, 125. Okay, I'm gonna start there. Then we're going to move to the <clears throat> Sahara. So start mode for time. I'm just going to run this for many hours because it won't take this long. I just don't bother trying messing with it. And then for the temperature, we're going to go up to 125-ish. We'll do C because 
That is 52C, 125-ish, and here we go. Start, start. This should take anywhere from four hours for the onions to 12, 13 hours for the peppers, depending on your machine, the humidity in your area, how large the peppers are, all that kind of stuff. So I'll let you know how long these took when I'm done. Okay, this is about 20 hours into it. Um, let me see if I can get some better light here, just a second. Most of the pieces have dried. There are still a few that need a little bit of extra time, but before you decide that it's dry or not, you need to wait, allow them to cool. These need to have a little time to cool down to let all of the cells contract because they will still be soft as they are warm. So once you've given them some time to cool, then you check. So here are all of our pieces. And I can tell you that from experience, these probably need about another hour. Some pieces are still just a little bendy, even though they're warm right now. Um, I know they're gonna need just a little bit of time. But I wanted to show you what they look like up close about when they're dry and what they look like. So I'm going to give these about another hour and then I will pull them off and we will store. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with them next. These onions have also had way more time than they needed to dry. I just went ahead and left them running um, overnight and then couldn't get right to them this morning. But here are those little tiny slivers of frozen onions already. Just like minced onions that you would get out of a jar out of your spice jars from the store, this is what they're like. Crispy, little tiny onions that are ready to either be ground into onion powder if you wanted, to be put aside for onion flakes for your meals, or to put them in what I'm gonna do next. Okay, as you can see, here are onions as they're done. And I wanted to show you, you can see in here that you've got some discoloration happening between this piece and some of the pieces have turned darker. And that's okay, it's just the sugars and your onion browning. It doesn't burn the same way as if you were doing it over big heat. It just is the way the, sh the sugars go in some onions. You can see even more here. Um, don't worry about it, that's normal, okay? So all I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna go ahead and put these in their jar. Um, we were completely out of minced onions. Well, I'm gonna get another jar that's not dirty. And we are gonna package these up just like they are. I am not making onion powder out of these. They are just going to be stored. And because of sugars on the onions, you might find that they stick a little bit. Just roll, roll the things up. These are not um, wet, they're not moisture laden, it's that they are so thin, because they were the small diced ones from Frozen, uh, they're just sticking to the sheets a lot more because you've got all that sugar that sticks, but they are fine. As you can still hear, that's dry. I have since replaced the lid that I dropped and here is my jar and what I'm going to do because onions do tend to get a little sticky because of the natural sugars in them and uh, because I just want to make sure that I've got the best storage I can with them. These are one of the few things that when I dry and don't powder but when I dry and just leave in a jar I go ahead and stick a moisture absorber in them just because of the way these things will work. Okay so there you go there are my minced onions. Okay, now we've got the peppers here. I just wanted to show you this is what they look like. In the first tray I had, I just put about a cup of the frozen on the tray just to see what they would come out to be dried. Now this is volumetrically, it's not by weight. I don't do things by weight, uh, but I wanted to just show you that this came out to probably only between an eighth and a sixth of a cup. Um, it's not quite a full quarter cup. 
So you have to remember that while the general rule for doing um, the conversions for dehydrated foods is about a quarter to a third of a cup of dried equals to about a cup of fresh, it's always going to be a little off depending on what kind of food that you have, how you prepared it, how big the dices were to how small they were. So it's usually a pretty general um, estimate about what your things are going to be like unless you do every specific foods and you get really detailed in the measurements. It's just knowing that if it doesn't quite come up to a quarter then add some more because then that way you get kind of what you think that you would be getting fresh. And because it's cooking it's not as exact as if you were baking. All right, so the choice I have here is to store these onions and peppers together and then any kind of meal that I want, I'm gonna rehydrate them and this is how I would do it. I prefer this version. You could always do the hot water soak right before you're going to make your meal, um, about 30 minutes beforehand. Either put these in a, in a small saucepan and just let them simmer at very low uh, temperatures on your stovetop or um, you can just put some hot water into a, a bowl and let them just soak. Or for me, what I would normally do is since I usually kind of try to prep the meal beforehand, I'll take as many as I think that I would need for a recipe and I would do this. And then I fill it with water, cap it off, and put it into the refrigerator to soak for about uh, probably four hours at least, maybe six to eight overnight if you have that time. But this way you're not having to do anything extra. You're not using extra electricity or gas or whatever you have to do. Um, you can just let this go as it will. It will, de it will absorb a lot of the water and what's left you can use to cook with. Okay, so that's one way that you can do this to make it easy to rehydrate. However, uh, we don't like peppers in our family. We're not real big fans of eating peppers like this. However, my oldest son, loves spice uh, pepper flavor in just about anything and so since we do some of this stuff just for him um, for his desires and wants I'm gonna uh, go ahead and do about half of this for him just store it whole like this and he can choose on how he wants to use it a lot of times when he's making homemade ramen he'll put things in his ramen and just be happy um, but because these are gonna need to soak ahead of time they don't really taste all that great when you put them in to a dish and then just let them sit there and not allow them to rehydrate and cook um, he'll have to decide what he wants done with it but the thing I'm gonna make from it is pepper powder and what I do use is pepper powder because it flavors things without the texture and without biting into the vegetable that we don't like to bite into so let's do that next okay I went to the boy and said what do you want done and he wants powder so we're not gonna save any of this for whole and I know I would normally use my Ninja uh, grinder to do this because that's how I roll. I really like the thing and it gives me a chance to do bulk. But I got a new uh, grinder, uh, a new coffee grinder this week, the Kasori, the Kasori coffee grinder. It comes with two blades, one uh, a, the just the single blade and then a double blade here. Um, the single blades to do coffee, the double blades to do like uh, and coarse grinds of nuts. This is to do finer grinds of uh, spices and stuff. And so I decided to go ahead and try it on this. Those of you who followed me before know that I kind of struggle with my KitchenAid because it doesn't have a lid, so it gets messy. This one's supposed to do that. And because I like to test out the things that are coming out uh, and let you guys know what you think about them. And we always get asked, um, you know, what kind of thing do you use to make powder? Then I've got a couple of examples of things that work for you. So here we go. I'm going to break this up a little bit ahead of time so these larger chunks aren't an issue. And as you can see, so that you know when these peppers are done, can you see how translucent these look? They are just, you can see that you can see through them. There's no moisture. They. The one thing about this grinder that I do notice that my KitchenAid grinder is a little different. The max fill one on this is much lower. Um, so you can't put it as much in one go as at a time. So. <clears throat> the thing to remember about grinding anything, especially with a coffee grinder, is you don't push down and just hold it. You need to pulse because you don't want to wear out your motor. And if you continually grind and just constantly let it go, it's creating heat. And what heat does to dehydrated foods when you're powdering them is that it introduces more moisture and the sugars that are inherent in those foods swell up and they start caking. Uh, and so you don't want to do that. So you're going to look at pulsing. The 
This needs just a little bit more grinding because you can still see that there are some lumps in there, but that's what it is. And man, it smells so good. Um, while I'm not a fan of eating peppers like on their own, um, especially when they're cooked, I'm just not a fan. This smells really good. And I think part of it's because it's blended in with that onion. And so it adds onion flavor to it as well. So what I'm going to do, instead of just grinding this again, I'm going to go ahead and add more to it, fill it up and let it work on its way through. Now we're getting there. That's a pretty fine grind right there. That's going to be perfect for him to do shaking on whatever he wants to shake it on to add a little extra spicy flavor to his meals. All right, now how do you store powder? We're going to do the rest of these later. Okay, we're going to want to store this in an airtight container. And if you want to grab this powder, what do we do? We have our little art brush or whatever brush that you want to just get it off of your lid. Now I hear all of you out there saying, but what about conditioning? Okay, so what do you do next? Let's condition. If you're going to do dehydrated products that you are not you are not sure if they're fully dry, that you're still new and you wanna do this, this is something that you should do first always. The only reason I didn't condition this first was because these things have been drying for days. As I was sick, I didn't want to mess with the food until I was well enough to do it. So I just let them dry. So I know these things are good and dry. But normally what you would do is you would put food into your jar. You, do, you want a jar that's a little bit bigger than what you have to put in. And you're going to just turn around and shake it once a day all through the week okay five to seven days however long you think you need what you're looking for is any condensation here on the jar any points where this the the pieces of food inside start sticking together and don't come apart easily or when you flip it over you start noticing them all sticking to the top and a quick shake doesn't pull them off you're going to get compression uh sticking here i call it compression or compaction sticking where the weight of food will make things stick to the top but a quick shake should pull it off if that shake doesn't come off then you know it's time to just go ahead and throw that back in the dehydrator let it dry some more and it'll be good something else also to do with the powder to condition it okay powders can be really sticky and clumpy and uh, especially after they've, been, after, they've, after they've gone through a grinder uh, the heat can make them expand they get all sticky and it's not that they're wet they just get stick big and, and they can start absorbing moisture just being in here and then as you're working with them so what I do is I would pour this onto a fruit leather sheet of some sort parchment paper works fine onto a cookie sheet that goes into a warmed oven usually what I do is I turn mine to 175 let it heat up then turn it off and I let that cookie sheet stay in there for about 15 or 20 minutes pull it out allow it to cool and then store it with particular with uh, powders that are particularly sticky uh, or particularly prone to clumping, um, I will either use arrowroot powder in the powder or I will use a moisture absorber. Both work. Um, today I just threw in a moisture absorber because it was handy and that's what I did. Now both of these will last for about, the powders usually last for about six to nine months uh, and you can use this to flavor anything. My son wants to be able to put this on french fries uh, and on other things that he wants to up the spice quotient on. Um, with these, just like I showed you, you can rehydrate this and use it in food that you would normally be using peppers and onions in. You just have already prepared them and you don't have to do anything with it. And having the frozen version makes all the prep work so much easier. You just pour your bags out and you're done. So this right here, beside the quarter cup that I took to rehydrate, this right here is equal to about four bags of peppers and onions. Okay, now to finish. I'm going to give you my quick review on this Kasori grinder. Uh, granted, I used it just today. I've not done an extensive uh, thing on it, but I just wanted to share with you my opinion on it so far. I love it more than the KitchenAid, and here's why. It's quieter. It does a better job of grinding. Now, my KitchenAid's a little older. The blades may be wearing out, uh, and this is a brand new one, so it's working a little better. That could be part of it, and it could be it's just a better machine. Um, you cannot put the lid on here and also put this jar attachment on. I mean, the, 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 the cover on, it does not fit. So you're going to still get, because powders, because powders are uh, 
smaller than the, the grains of coffee that you would normally do this with, they're more prone to just throwing that powder into the machine so that you're going to want to have something like an art brush. Uh, that's what I use. You can use a pastry brush. You can use a paintbrush that's never been used for anything. But I mean, you want to use something that you will never use for any other reason. Uh, of course, these are my dehydrating brushes, but then all I do is I just go through here and pull that off, okay? It did leave a little residue in the, the grinder itself, uh, but I'm used to that from anything else I'm working with. A quick um, uh, wipe with a rag or with a brush to get most of it out um, is all you really need to do. All right, so I love this. It's, it was $39.95 on Amazon. It's about the same price as the KitchenAid, but the cool thing is it comes with two bowls, not just one, um, so that you can interchange how you use this. You can have one just for coffee, one just for grinding all of your spices and dehydrated products. Um, it does not do as much as having a larger bullet blender, but I use both depending on the volume that I'm working with. So I find it handy to have both sizes because I use these much more than I use a larger blender. Um, so overall, I prefer this over my KitchenAid, um, but it's not something that I would run out and replace yours with. If you already have one that you love, don't replace it. But if you're looking for a grinder, um, this is a great one. I hope this helped see how you can really make your pantry uh, fill up fast with using the convenience of pre-frozen foods from the grocery store. So if you want to learn more about dehydrating, you can click this link right here, and I'll see you again next time. Happy dehydrating.